The word enjoy means to take delight in, to take satisfaction in, to take pleasure in, whether it's an activity or an occasion, or to or, or possesses a benefit of. So each person gets a benefit of enjoying life. Now, as a Christian, it's imperative that we approach any topic um, that we always seek God and we seek Scripture and make that the ultimate authority for whatever subject matter that we're in, whatever part, whether it's enjoying this part of our life or that part of our life. That being said, I wrote down some things. So let's start looking at the concept of enjoying life from a secular point of view and then from a biblical point of view. So the secular point of view, <clears throat> there are no shortages of enjoying life quotes from the secular viewpoint. I wrote some down. Everybody heard of YOLO? Y-O-L-O? -O? That means you only live once. Live every day as it's your last. Carp diem. It's Latin for seize the day. Live the way you want li like and keep moving forward. Do the things you like because if you don't, you will regret it one day. I'm living my best life. If it's not fun, it's not worth doing. Do what makes you personally happy. Live in the moment, forget the past, and don't concern yourself with the future. Live however you want to live. Dream big, stay positive, work hard, and enjoy the journey and, and have fun with your friends and family. These quotes all sound great. They sound like if you did them all, you'd enjoy life. They motivate, they encourage, they inspire people to go out and start enjoying life. Live life the way you want. Seize the day. Have fun. Be happy. Enjoy every moment. Sounds like an everyday party, right? Everyday party. So that's exactly, that is what exactly is wrong with it. The focus is solely on yourself. Only you. I'm going to please me. I'm going to do what makes me happy. I'm going to do the things that I enjoy. I don't care what the consequences of, uh, of it are. I don't care how many people I affect negatively. I'm going to do it because me, 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 I, I, I want to. See, there's no me, and there should be no me in anything. But if you turn that M upside down and make it a W, it's a we. There should be we in everything. Right? <laughs> and there's no incorporation of God. None. And some of the statements are actually in direct opposition of what the Bible teaches. A secular viewpoint says, pursue your dreams, make a ton of money, buy anything you want, do what you want, when you want, how you want, and you'll be successful in living life at the fullest. <coughs> a secular viewpoint, <coughs> viewpoint basically is telling yourself, there is no God, nobody died on the cross for me personally, I'm going to do what I want to do because I'm a selfish human being, and I'll suffer the consequences upon death because who knows if there's really a God, right? Well, we know different. We know there is a God. Now, let's go to the biblical viewpoint. First and foremost, it's important to realize that Jesus Christ actually came and died for us so that we can enjoy life abundantly. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> not that we might, not that we should, it's that we can. But the thing is, we have to go to the cross to get it. Amen? So, here we go. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance in full until it overflows. John 10.10. 10. Now, these are in red in the Bible, which means Jesus said them. In his own words, to his disciples, true enjoyment of life only comes from having a relationship with God. If you think your life is full now, you're full of it. <coughs> because your life isn't full until God's in it. Your life isn't complete until God's in it. Your life isn't as fruitful and as prosperous. Where are you going? Hey. Where are you going? Should, should we wait until he's done? Oh, okay. 
<laughs> His mom's face is red as a crack. <laughs> uh, note to the studio audience, if you ever come up here uh, to see us live anywhere, make sure you go to the bathroom before you get in the building because you may get called out. <laughs> It's important to realize that God really does want us to live abundantly. He really does want us to live a fruitful life. <coughs> he wants us to enjoy everything that we can enjoy in life. <coughs> but we have to put God in the center of it. We have to. Now, in, in John 10.10, 10, Jesus makes it abundantly clear that it, we can only have that if we do have a relationship with God. See, it's only a... It, it, it's not a question of whether or not God wants us to have fun or enjoy life. Rather, it's a matter of what enjoying life looks like to a biblical viewpoint for your eternal life. So, rather, it's a matter of what we want <coughs> compared to what God wants us to have. And the problem is that as Christians, we sometimes get caught up in the secular world, the secular mindset, and we start to think it's better or preferable to enjoy life in a secular way. He's back. With no regard to God. <laughs> Who said that? Oh, Joseph. Hey, and don't forget, 1-800-JOSEPH is still open. Not realizing that God can take your enjoyment of life to a whole new level when we actually cultivate uh, our relationship with Him. A, a biblical viewpoint says, seek God first and foremost, learn and obey His Word, commit your goals to Him, include Him in everything that you do, and He will bless you, give you success, and ensure you truly enjoy life to the fullest. Now here's the deal, folks. Some people say, I'm tired of waiting on God. Let me tell you what I know about God. <clears throat> Is there a thing to turn these fans on higher? Were you roasting up here? Here, here's the thing. I know that God makes us wait because it's what's best for us. I know that God sometimes holds back things because we're not prepared for them. And I also know that God is quintessentially able to do things that quick. Big word? Well, you guys are trained. I ain't got to say it anymore. They got, they got me. I know that God, this quick, quicker than you can blink your eyes, quicker than you can say the word God, quicker than anything that you can think in your mind, God can change bad to great. God can change imperfect to as perfect as you can be. God can make the impossible absolutely possible. He can take you from the poor house to the mansion. He can take you from the outhouse to a golden toilet. That is God. And that is not me spewing stuff up here. That is biblical scripture, the way it's supposed to be taught. Give it to the feet of God, put it on the feet of the cross, and watch God work. Because He does things that most people think can't be done. But He does them every single day. Just like that. Put a smile on God's face, and I'm telling you, just like that, you're in your new home. Just like that, your business is prosperous. Just like that, everything you've ever wanted is there. Just like that. That is how powerful our God truly is. Smile. Nobody going to smile up in here? Up in here? Up in here. Oh, millions of comedians out of work and Brian's trying. When do you leave again, by the way? <laughs> I had it. Take Charlie with you. Now, let's take a look at some specific Bible verses about enjoying life to support the viewpoint I just gave you. What does the Bible say about enjoying life? In his letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Timothy 6.17, Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their worth, their hope in wealth, <clears throat> which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, 
who richly provides us with everything in our employment. I actually knew a guy that he owned an asphalt company, and he was raking in the money. Just arrogant, kind of flashy, let everybody know him and his family had the best. They bought a new farm. They you know, got, their, got everything. Man, they were living the life, but they were arrogant to the point of, you know, it's kind of getting sick now. You know, you got it. It's okay. Well, he went out and drinking one night, and he hit somebody, and he crippled a 17-year-old boy for life, and he got sued, and they went from owning that asphalt company to being arrogantly wealthy above anybody else to not owning the asphalt company to basically begging where he can go get a job somewhere. He lost his house. He lost his cars. He lost his wife. And all of it. But here's the thing. That happened, I don't remember, it was a weekend, Friday or Saturday. He went from Thursday night having everything, his arrogant self, having it all. Friday or Saturday night, he knew he just made one of the biggest mistakes of his life. And about three or four months later, it was over. Because he knew he was getting ready to lose it all. He never went to God. God could have fixed the problem. But he never did. That scripture tells us it is uncertain. Don't take for granted what God gives you because the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Not only did Jesus die for us to have abundant life, but the Bible goes on to tell us here that God richly provides with everyone with our enjoyment. Look at the contrast in this verse. Rich people who are putting their hope in their wealth, which is uncertain and not guaranteed, versus putting their hope in God, who is guaranteed to provide everything you need, everything you want, everything your heart could ever desire, God is absolutely fully capable of providing. Not only can He, the Bible says, He will. And God is not a liar. Amen? In fact, the more you cultivate your relationship with God, the more you can make Him smile, the more you'll beginning to you'll, you'll you'll begin to enjoy life. Now, cultivating with your your relationship with God enhances the enjoyment of your life. And there's several verses in the Bible make it clear that when you spend more time with God and serving and obeying Him, that enjoyment of life will result. Deuteronomy six one two. These are the commands decrees. And the laws of the Lord your God directed to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. So that you, your children, and their children, other <coughs> after them, may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all the decrees and commandments that I give you. And so that you may enjoy a long life. Psalms 37.4 Take delight in the Lord, delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 619, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest assured. You, may, you make known to me the path of my life. You will fill me with the joy in the presence, the eternal pleasure in your right hand. If you want to enjoy life more, start spending more quality time with God and doing what pleases Him instead of what pleases you. And watch God do it now. That is a promise from God. This wasn't some man making this up and putting it in a Bible and saying it was holy. This is God's Word that made it holy. Amen? This isn't some lunatic up on a stage, and I'm not talking about me. Some different people that don't know what they're talking about. Not, not me. I know what I'm talking about. You know what? I know what I'm talking about. Here we go. I see too many people putting faith where faith doesn't believe. Right? I got faith that I can drink that fifth of Jack Daniels. I know I can. I got faith I can go get the prettiest girl in the bar tonight because I know I can. I got faith I can take this car zero to 80 because I know I can. See, I got faith that my life is about ready to be abundantly better than it's ever been because I ride the cross train. 
Because I'm with my Father in heaven. I am with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know where I came from. I know where I'm going. I know where I've been. And I took it all as a learning lesson to get where I'm going. To be able to sit up here in this joint and tell God how much I love Him. To tell you that He loves you this much too. To tell you that who you were doesn't matter. To tell you that where you're going to go, if you get on your knees, repeat your sins, make God smile, that just like that, your life changes now. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. It changes now. The Apostle Paul went through a living hell. He went through hell from being beat, from being chastised, being bit by a venomous snake, from getting thrown overboard on a ship. He never lost faith. From imprisonment, he wrote most of the New Testament. He never lost faith in God. Do you want to know why? Because he knew the consequences if he did. But see, we live in a time where if something bad happens in your life, if something isn't going the way that you wanted, we live in a time where we curse God instead of praying harder. We live in a time when we go, why me, Lord? Why me? You're not Chris Christopherson. Quit trying to write a song. Amen? You're you. You're individual. You're who God created in His own image. He numbered the hair on your heads before you were born. He knew you and gave you your name. He knows everything about you. I told somebody one time, I said, God sees you in your car. God sees you in the bathroom. God sees you in the shower. And he goes, what is he, a pervert? I said, let me tell you something. That's not even funny. God sees you for you. See, God can't distinguish the difference between that kind of a thing. God sees us for us. What we're sinning, what we're saying, how we're reacting, how we act in every situation of our lives, God sees it. The Bible tells us in Isaiah, God says, I have an eye on you, says the Lord. There is no place you can run. There's no place you can hide. There, it, Listen to this. You want to get scared? There's no thought that you can have that God doesn't know. That's why the Bible says if you thought it, you've done it. Can you imagine wearing a shirt with everything you've ever thought on it that you think somebody else didn't know? How many of you would be willing to go out in public with that shirt on? First off, that shirt would be a 95,000X because the, it's going to go from that end of the street to the other for everything you thought that nobody thought that you, that you would ever think of. God knows that. And He's going to hold you accountable for that. Just because it didn't come from here doesn't, doesn't mean that God doesn't know it because the Bible teaches us He does know it. A little spooky, isn't it? Isn't that a little creepy? If you're worried about that part of it, there's a change that needs to be made. Because see, I know something for a fact, Jack. I didn't going to do the changing. That's up to you whether you're going to do the changing. God, God's not a nursery. He's not going to change your little diapers every time that you go potty. He's waiting for you to clean it up. He's waiting for you to be better. He's waiting for you to make the change. He's waiting for you to make him smile. He's wait Here's the thing. This is the honest and gospel truth. You can ask Kelsey Lane and Cynthia. I tell them all the time. All the time I tell them. Change is coming. Change is coming. You have to be willing to change to get the change. You can't stay status quo. There's no future in status quo. Status quo means that you're cemented in the right place. And I tell them all the time, and they tell me too because, you know, I'm a little dim-witted a lot. Something good happens, and I'll go, yes! And they'll go, why are you so excited? I'm like, aren't you excited? They'll look at me, and they literally would say, we expected it. They expected it. I get all jacked up because something, and they're telling me, well, we knew it would happen. God, you know, that's what we've been praying for. Why are you, why are you excited? You're, you're, you're saying something that you preach differently about. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not excited. They go, no, you can be excited. Just don't act like you didn't expect it. So in prayer, we're supposed to expect what we're praying for, right? If we pray in faith, 
If we pray in a pure heart, then we should expect what we get. And when we get it, sure, you should be joyful, but don't do what I did. Man, I didn't expect that right now. They're going, why? It's what you prayed for. Expect to get what you prayed for. Expect to get a change in life. Expect to get a new lease on life. Expect God to do more abundantly in you that you've ever thought imaginable. The Bible tells us that he, that Jesus, he didn't come here with peace. Jesus came with the sword. And I'm going to explain that to you for a little minute, all right? Just a little minute. I'm going to explain it to you. House will be divided. That means if you're with people that are sinning, Put two rotten apples, put a good apple, a rotten apple, and a good apple together. That rotten apple sooner or later is going to rotten those two good apples, isn't it? God is trying to tell you, get separated from the bad. The Bible told us, you know, we may lose our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and friends. We may lose them for the sake of righteousness. For the sake of righteousness. Now, People come back and they say, preacher man, preacher man. Does that mean I have to just disregard these people? No, that's not what that means. It means you got to pray for them more. you got to live by an example and let them see how you're living. You have got to impact their lives in a godly way. But the one thing you can't do, you can't judge them for what they've done. One, Jeez, when you leave here and you go downtown, you're going to have those people on the side of the road going, you know, homeless, need food, God bless you, no place to sleep, God bless you. But one sign you're not going to see, God is hiring for judging people. Apply within. You're not going to see that sign. He doesn't need any help in that. So stop it. Help those people with a tainted past. Help those people that can't get up on their own. Help those people, the drug addict, the alcoholic, the anger management people, anybody that's ever had a past, quit beating them down like a dog. You're not helping them. You're destroying them. And to destroying them, you're destroying everybody that comes in their path. When if you help them and they get to God, then you're, that one person can reach out to so many more people than you can. And here's why. The people he hung out with were like-minded. He will go back to those people and say, this is what changed me to this. This is how I live this life abundantly right now. Because this Christian person told me about God and, and showed me what that cross truly was all about. That changed my life. It wasn't me on my own because we're mortal. That's impossible for us to understand the grand picture of life. But if we put it on the doorstep, on the foot of that cross, and if everything we do... A, the word God bless you doesn't have to, to mean nothing to people. Sometimes people just go, God bless you. When I say God bless you, I mean it. When I say Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, I mean it. Here's the fact. I should be dead. I'm alive. You know, I, I shouldn't be here today, but I'm here. A lot of you people in your life shouldn't be here today with things that you've done, but you're here. A lot of people in here have mental attacks and, and devil attacks, and they don't know where life's going to go. I know where life's taken me. I'm going to that mansion that God promised me. That's where I'm going. Learn to start enjoying the little things in life. See, sometimes as Christians, we think that we're missing out in life because we don't have the material things that other people around us have. You know why you don't have them? You didn't pray hard enough. Or you didn't believe in it hard enough. Or that God wanted you in that situation to benefit other people in theirs. There's always a reason why God does things. We may never understand it until we get up there and we ask you. But then we'll understand it, right? People want fame, fortune, multiple homes, cars, businesses. You know, that can happen if it's God's will. But I'm telling you, the best way to make that happen is to make God smile. And I preach that for eight weeks straight. Eight weeks straight. Nehemiah 8.10 says, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks 
and send some of those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's hard not to grieve, but you have to. You have to know where your lost one is. Then there's, there's time to rejoice that. And then you have to change your life for the betterment so that you can go see them yourself. Amen? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell on the land and enjoy safe pasture. Psalms 37.1. Um, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to end it. I know, yeah, you get off the pulpit. Um, Abraham was promised a land of milk and honey. Correct? This world has turned that same land into a land of greed and money. Not milk and honey, but greed and money. We've turned this land into flesh. We've turned this land into I'll get what I want, how I want to get it. Instead of we'll get what we want because God's going to bless it to us because our faith is abundantly stronger than the person next to us. See, we'll get what we want because we still know that God is still sitting on the throne. We'll get what we want because we know we stay true to not just one God, we stay true to the only true God. We know that Jesus Christ came here. We know that He died. We know that He was resurrected. And we know that He did it because He loved me personally. He loved all of us personally. You should take that personal. Once you take God personal, you take Jesus personal, and you try to make God smile just like that. Just like that, I'm telling you. Your life changes. It's over. Amen, Eddie? Everything changes. But you have to make the change. I can't change you for you. I can tell you Scripture. I can get up here and scream at you. But unless you go out and implement it yourself, there is no way in this world that you're going to please God. None. It starts with you. And when you decide to be the best you, let it go, give it to God, you're nothing. But as soon as you do, you're everything that God wanted and He will now prepare it for you, and then He will give it to you. Amen? And if God was here, He would say...